And we should be recording now, and since I have forgotten to press that button early enough again, just give a quick run through. You are watching Valkyrie Gaming's Learn to Play Wrath and Glory. And then now back to our regularly scheduled show. Uh, so next up we have uh, Rodrigo. Uh, you may know him as Rotors in a lot of the uh, Warhammer uh, areas on uh, Discord. Uh, he is one of my mods for... Uh, the Rat Catchers Guild, which is Warhammer Fantasy, as well as um, a temporary mod for Wrath and Glory, just to make sure that we keep everybody in line. Uh, so yeah, tell us a little about, your, about yourself. Yeah, well, I'm one of the temporary mods in the Wrath and Glory server. I know nothing about Wrath and Glory, so that keeps everyone in the server calm. So <laughs> I'm adjudicating power without any knowledge whatsoever. So it fits the setting, kind of. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it actually uh, does. <laughs> uh, I mostly play a lot of games. I'm known in the blood and Mud and Blood server Discord for uh, religiously loving a game and then hating it two weeks later as soon as I've played it uh, a lot. Uh, currently, I'm in pretty much uh, playing a lot of Mithras. Uh, I do a little freelance work. I'm trying to get into more uh, design writing in the industry. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's me. Also, we had to touch on that a little bit. Uh, there was an adventure that came out uh, yesterday from Cubicle 7 for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition in which uh, Rodrigo and myself were able to help with uh, some secondary proofreading. So we got, uh, I know that's my first kind of credits on a game book, so that was kind of exciting. I'm not sure if it is for uh, Rodrigo, but... Yes, the first one that my name appears there. Nice, awesome. It was, it was pointed out that it was the only Latino name. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I did not see that pointed out. <laughs> It's like a bunch of British and English names, and there's like one impronounceable Latino name right there. I don't know. You know what? People tend to, or there's, I've had a lot of people uh, mess up the pronunciation of Charlotte. So, <laughs> uh, and then let's move on to uh, Joel, also known as Story Wonker, who is one of my mods in the uh, Age of Sigmar Soulbound Discord, also by Cubicle Seven. Hopefully, to be released sometime later next week. Uh, Joel, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm Joel. Uh, the Mostly what I play at the moment is uh, Scum and Villainy. Uh, so this is this is something of a departure. Um, and I've been kind of a, a fan of 40k since I was a kid. So I've always wanted to kind of get in on 40k role playing. And the character I'm playing is... I was going through the, the character concepts and saw the... The thing of the Order Pronatus, which is the uh, the Order of Sororitas, who go and hunt holy, uh, hunt down and recover holy relics. And my brain just went forty k Lara Croft. Um, and so, so she dual wields bolt pistols. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So when I was going through character creation a few days ago, getting everyone's uh, pre gen characters done up, uh, I made sure to vary the the weapon loadouts. And when I was rolling some of the backgrounds for some of the other characters, I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head. I'll have to take a look. But uh, there is one. I think it might be uh, Celestina that has ties to uh, relic hunting as well. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I am Charlotte. I am the GM for this game as well as the uh, ringleader of Valkyrie Gaming. Um, you can catch me on Twitter at Foxfire22, that is F-O-X-F-Y-R-E-2-2. Uh, I post all kinds of random things for random role-playing games. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, to touch on the Valkyrie Gaming just a little bit, uh, Valkyrie Gaming is a group that I formed to help... Um, to have a group for lack of a better term, gender minority tabletop gamers to be able to come together and play, uh, discuss the game in a setting that they may, may be more comfortable with. Um, we have a Discord set up. We're pushing, I think, 275 members, maybe closer to three now. Um, have a Twitter account set up for it. We are starting to spread the word. People are sharing the information. They're getting their friends who might be interested uh, involved. And, you know, honestly, it is a really wonderful group of... Uh, people that we have. Um, if you are woman, whether trans or cis, or um, non-binary, gender fluid, uh, female presenting, that sort of thing, um, hit sla uh, exclamation discord in our chat if you're on Twitter. 
Uh, if you're watching later on on YouTube, it'll be down in the show notes. Uh, come, come say hi. And you know, if you're an, al an ally, we also have a place for you. So there is something for everyone as long as you're you're cool. Um, be a dick about it, then obviously you will not be uh, welcome uh, to stick around the server. But uh, those have thankfully been few and far between. Um, other places you may be able to f it may be able to find me are on um, Mud and Blood podcast. Uh, we're going to be getting our cult divinity lost actual play started up right away. Um, we're working on uh, Forbidden Lands stream game, which happens once once a month right now, uh, and that is with the uh, Three Skulls Tavern. So I, for lack of a better term, I get around. Uh, so I, I've had a pretty long history with Warhammer 40k. Um, I started to get into it back when I was, I think I was in junior high, and I seen Necromunda for the first time at a game store, uh, and I fell in love with it at that point, but I still have yet to play Necromunda itself. Um, it was the, the models, the terrain, everything that uh, kind of got me into it. Then uh, as a few years went on, uh, I got into Warhammer Fantasy in high school with some friends and then branched off to uh, my interest of 40k, obviously starting off with Sisters of Battle, because of course. Um, and I have been big into the lore for quite a while. Um, I haven't really played too many of the tabletop role-playing games. Uh, I was able to play one last year at IntrigueCon, which is a local um, role-playing convention that we have here in the spring and fall. Uh, that was playing Dark Heresy, which uh, all in all, uh, the, the game was fun. Uh, the story was fun, the character was kind of neat to play. Um, I had a hand flamer and I got all the kills, so can't go wrong with that when that's your real goal in a 40k game. Um, that's, to, that's simplifying it a lot. Uh, 40k can be used to play any game you can dream of. Um, whether you want to do essentially a dungeon crawl throughout some uh, ruins that are infested by Tyranids, uh, you can play uh, an intrigue game where you're trying to uh, root out uh, some cultists and uh, heretics. Um, I'm sure you could figure out a, a way to play a love story. Um, yeah, pretty much any game that you want to play, you can do it in the 40k setting. Um, Joel, would you have a, a counter to that at all? Does that sound about um, right? No, no, that that sounds about about right. But I I think the the one thing that would that I'd say for it to be 40k is the tone. Um, and you know, this is this is the universe that coined the term grimdark. Um, and so, even when you go a bit lighter, you kind of still have that kind of gritty, um, slightly despairing tone. I think is is a really important part of the universe. Ah, uh, yeah. But a forty k love story could be really interesting. Yeah, um, that's one thing that really drew me into a lot of the stories was nothing ever had a happy ending. You may think that there was a happy ending, but right at the very end, no, no, it's not going to happen. No. You saved the princess, oh, but you're now a servant of chaos. So sorry. But but this story is going to have a happy ending, right? I mean, we're... that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how well we roll. Yep. It's the fact he's got to survive this. She's going to die later. <laughs> yeah, well. Unless uh, the emperor brings her back. <laughs> well, hey, look at Celestine, right? It could happen. Yeah? Yeah, and a this few other. Uh, perpetual saints kicking around. Alright, so uh, I wanted to have some big epic um, intro set up for this and I had something in my mind uh, but I just did not have the time to rewrite it. So I'm going to pull something up quickly and read the first few lines of it to get a bit of an idea of where we're going to go. Um, so to introduce our characters a little bit, we have a squad of sisters. Uh, they come from various um, orders. Uh, I know we have uh, 
Sefenius from Order of Our Martyr Lady. Uh, I'm not too sure what to Rodrigo and Ana uh, would go with. Um, for this game, because it is an intro game, we're not worried about their orders too, too much. They're not going to come into play. Um, consider it something like... Uh, like... Death Watch is the Space Marines. This group is to the Adeptus Sororitas. So it is a group of far-ranging sisters brought together from various orders to enact the Emperor's will. Uh, so if you had a chance to take a look, about two or three days ago, I did a solo stream where I was making... Um, the characters that our players are playing today, with the exception of uh, Story Wonkers, he ended up getting his own done up beforehand. Uh, so I went and walked through the creation of Sifenia, uh, and we decided that Sifenia is going to have a bolt gun, like a bolt pistol and a chainsword. So she's going to be our more uh, in-your-face, uh, get-it-done kind of role. Uh, for Rodrigo's character, I have just your standard loadout, your standard bolt gun, which I, on its own is pretty badass. Um, set up for Ana's character, I gave her a heavy bolter to start getting into some of the uh, rules that surround Salvo and uh, and the like. I think that is correct. Um, like I've had about two weeks to read through the rules, if that. Uh, I can't remember when it came out, but from day one I've been trying to read through and absorb as much as I can. Um, Story Wonker is pretty prominent in the uh, Wrath and Glory Discord as well. Uh, he's gone through a lot of the uh, combat scenarios in the book as well, so I'm going to be leaning upon uh, him a little bit to uh, help us get our rules sorted out. Uh, one point to note is at this time, uh, Cubicle 7 is going through and making a few edits uh, to the book itself. There was some uh, heretic shenanigans that happened when they uh, exported it and stuff didn't turn out right. Um, so we're gonna, we've had a lot of time to talk about some of the issues that have arisen. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get through those in a pretty clear and understandable manner. And uh, yeah, in a few weeks, hopefully uh, we'll be able to get a revised copy and have all the rules nice and solid. I am having a hard time finding what I'm trying to find. Uh, I think I found it. Okay, yeah, so I am going to snag that. And please bear with me. Uh, and you know what? If at any time anybody in chat has any questions about what we just did, uh, mechanic-wise, uh, feel free to ask us to uh, go through it. Uh, we are here to help um, help our players uh, learn the game from a uh, starter standpoint, as well as learn them from a GM perspective. So there's a good chance that if we're going through something that you don't fully understand, you're probably not the only one. So um, drop a question in chat and we'll get to that at a uh, dramatically appropriate period. All right, so uh, any questions before we start from uh, chat or from the players? Nothing from the players, going once, no. going twice. <laughs> we'll let the uh, chat catch up for a second here or two. I'll have to figure out how to word this. Have we rolled objectives? Uh, I did for the uh, uh, okay. starter characters. If you haven't done that yet, uh, go ahead and uh, do that. Um, no, I did. Cool. Uh, what was yours? Uh, recant a holy, lit a holy litany applicable to the current situation. Cool. Um, yeah, actually, if everyone else has their character sheets up, if they want to go through um, their objectives, the objectives in the game, I believe, are um, touch points to go through during a session, which may or may not provide some kind of reward. If if you do, if you complete them, you get a point of wrath. Okay, cool. Okay. 
And and where is that on the sheet? Just below where Wrath is. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine's blank. So. Okay. 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 Sorry. Um, Just roll a d6. Then right. I'll I'll tell you which okay. one uh, which one it is. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah, and those of you who are I rolled a six. At, awesome. Those of you that are watching at home, we have our fantasy grounds roller up on the screen for uh, checking that out later. Okay, so. Uh, Cat, the, the six is purge a heretical item or individual with holy flame. Oh, I like that. Got so yeah, that. I, I do like the, the the objectives are in this game because it gives you kind of a, a touchstone as to how you're supposed to be, how the kind of character characters work in the lore, which. Well, that's, that's very nice. fun, yes, so. Somehow I did not get the stats for the bolter put in in time. Um, all right. So anyway, I can do that afterwards. We'll do that when we come to. Uh... Um, when we come to a combat situation. So uh, some questions that have popped up in chat. Um, what percentage of party casualties should I expect? I have no idea. Uh, some of the playthroughs in our testing grounds have come out very bloody that uh, combat is a deadly uh, venture in this game which is to be expected uh, I, I will note um, my character doesn't actually have power armor okay. unlike all the others so I'm probably going to be taking cover a lot fair, no that works because then we start to deal with our uh, cover mechanics uh, now what else do we have? How many backup characters have the players rolled? None. Uh, the nice thing about this is we're shooting to keep our streams at about two hour length. So uh, if something happens in the next hour and 20 minutes and somebody dies, uh, we'll have time in between uh, <laughs> this session and our next session, which will be at 12 p.m. PST next Saturday to get another character rolled up. So hopefully that will not be an issue though, but uh, there's only one way to find out. All right, so this is just gonna be a rough um, outline of what I had um, set up for the intro for our current session. So in Hive Strata 345.26.34, local designation Fair Verona, two houses both alike in dignity, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny. To new mutiny. Now, Hive Strata 345.26 dot three four also known as fair verona is found in the necromunda hive so somebody in chat did mention romeo and juliet the perfect 40k love story well hey guess what here we are um when i first started to get this uh adventure written up i want to do something just a little bit different and what better than a uh a Shakespeare story in 40k but we'll see how this goes uh, so you as a group of Adeptus Sororitas have been brought together um, in I was thinking that you may have been not repentia of a sorts but you may have been sent to um, this particular hive as a form of um, punishment for any acts that may have been uh, committed in the past. Nothing major or anything, no uh, blasphemy against uh, the god emperor or failing your sisters, but it could be something to help um, adjust your behavior just a little bit. Because it's not like the Adeptus Rortis don't brainwash you anyway. <laughs> so Fenya, uh, volunteered because they wouldn't let her become a Repentia. She kept asking and they wouldn't let her. You need to actually sin first. She was of the opinion that she was a sinner, but they said no, so. Almost like a line of uh, self-flagellation. Uh, yeah. Without going to those extremes. Exactly. All right, so that would 
account for why Sefenia is there. Does anybody else have any other ideas as to their character? Now, for those who aren't overly familiar with the 40k setting, uh, not only is this a, a grim, dark setting in the very far future where nothing is ever uh, butterflies and rainbows, um, but you are a group of warrior nuns. You are beholden to the Emperor of Mankind. You are there to spread his glorious word any way possible. And anybody who talks against the Emperor or the Imperium is, in your eyes, a heretic. Someone who needs to either be corrected of those ways or burnt at the stake. Suffer not the witch to live. Religious fanatics after a sorts. Why would uh, Syra be uh, here in this group? Do you think? Um, I think because her her job, her calling as a sister, is to to hunt down relics that have been lost. So I think possibly she either allowed one to fall into the hands of a heretic who was hunting it, or or it got destroyed, and that that's why she's been been assigned to this kind of squad of of the ones who are who are being sent away for kind of to to learn to act right. I think I think it's it's she failed at something and is trying to redeem that failure. Yeah, to to learn their place in the uh, order of the orders. So and this is also something that we can build upon as uh, the game goes on. So you have uh, been brought together to uh, go investigate some um, troubling situations that have been arising a little bit further down Hive. Sorry, I got a fan that was blowing on me. Um, you arrive onto the uh, current strata, uh, we'll say sometime mid-morning in the uh, day-night cycle. Uh, being in a giant hive itself, which is essentially uh, a huge block of billions of people, um, sunlight is not uh, common in most areas of the uh, middle or lower hive. Uh, there are certain aspect or certain areas in the hive itself which are set up to uh, bring um, sunlight down into some of the lower reaches, but those are few and far between. Uh, there are lumens that are set up in the ceiling that uh, will cycle through uh, the day-night cycle as they see fit. Uh, Rough-looking uh, glow globes that uh, would look more at home in uh, a late 1800s, early 1900s um, setting. Uh, as you come out of what I'm presuming it would be a lift to bring you down throughout some of the levels. Uh, you step out of the lift and you see uh, buildings on both sides of what would pretty much be considered a street. Uh, the road itself is paved. There's litter and uh, detritus uh, scattered throughout the street along the, uh, the curbs. Uh, on the sidewalks themselves, you see uh, storefronts pushed off away from the uh, curb a little bit. Um, very similar to what um, to what you would see walking down a street uh, in modern day times. Uh, glass windows, doors, um, signs, neon signs indicating what uh, what the storefront is for, whether it's like a bar or a place for clothing or food. Um, people are wandering to and fro down the sidewalks, kind of minding themselves. Uh, when you step out of the gate, you start to hear people mutter and whisper to themselves um, about, uh, well, what's the sororitas doing here? And they start to look at each other nervously because it's not too often that they would see one of your order or your uh, faction down in these parts of the hive. Um, so when they're wandering around, um, walking up and down the sidewalks, they start to give uh, your group a bit of a berth. Um, 
power armor does have that effect on people. Especially armored power armor. Yeah, so and the bolt guns probably don't help either. Yeah. Yeah, so what the citizens would see walk out of the lift would be four armored women of various heights, uh, armored in metal and uh, ceramite power armor, uh, carrying big blocky weapons of war and destruction. Uh, some of those weapons are larger than others. Um, how would you best describe a bolt gun, Joel? Um, well, they're, they're very, if you if you look at the, the art of the foot camels, they're, they're very square, um, but they're also very ornate, ornamented. Each one is kind of a, a relic handed down in the order for centuries, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, festooned with purity seals and, and holy scripts and things like that. Yeah, technology in the 40k universe is um, a bit forward and also a bit backward of where we currently are. Uh, space travel's a thing. Uh, big capital ships, miles long, are a thing. Um, bringing the ultimate wrath of the Emperor in the form of uh, Exterminatus, which is orbital bombardment till the world that it's bombarding is dead, is a thing. Um, but then artificial intelligence, for the most part, is not. Uh, they don't have computers anymore like what we have now. Think back 20 years, 25 years, back when we had the Apple II, and that is what you would see on their uh, technical readouts. Uh, they have some lobotomized servitors and uh, servo skulls and cherubim that uh, float around doing uh, the bidding of their owners, but those are uh, controlled through... Um, punch cards and uh, stim implants so uh, it's a little bit of a mix of everything that we've come across and maybe everywhere that we will go as a, as a human race um, the threats are varied in the, in the uh, far future there's uh, Xenos alien races which uh, threaten humanity uh, humanity itself threatens humanity um, and then there's the forces of chaos which are um, demons and humans that are twisted by the chaos gods um, so our Adeptus Sororitas the Sisters of Battle and the other uh, orders that fall into the Adepta uh, they are called upon to um, dispense the Emperor's will so as these four start to walk along the, uh, the roadway, um, the mutterings increase. You start to see people duck into uh, the doorways, uh, lest the, uh, the gaze of the sisters fall upon them. So they have been given the instructions to go and investigate uh, an incident that was called in by the local uh, Arbites, which I'm not sure if I'm ever pronouncing that properly or not. Uh, it could either be Arbites or Arbites. Uh, I will type the spelling in the channel. Uh, A-R-B-I-T-E-S. Uh, some of the words in 40k are kind of Roman-esque with gothic tweaks to it, so it's very hard to tell what uh, it's supposed to be pronounced as. Uh, if anybody wants to take a shot at it, feel free. Uh, so, anyway, the Arbites, which is what I will call them for uh, the sake of our stream, uh, called in that there was some uh, mangled bodies that were found in a, uh, a tube off of uh, one of the secondary thoroughfares of the main part of this, uh, uh, this level of the hive. And they didn't go into too much detail, just that uh, they needed to send somebody down to take a look at this. Uh, obviously, uh, well, I don't say obviously, uh, they did add on that uh, there were uh, some murders that uh, were perpetrated. So I will turn it over to the players now to start getting a bit of a feel for their characters um, as we get moving down the road towards uh, where they were directed to go by their superiors. Uh, 
I will bring up the rear of our group, occasionally checking behind us while, while holding my uh, heavy bolter, whose name is Harmony, that's written in large gold letters across the side. I'm just keeping an eye on all these suspicious looking citizens. You do not have enough eyes for that. Sifenia <laughs> <laughs> is uh, walking, she's used to the stairs um, that just happens wherever they go. So, she, but uh, she's looking, uh, trying to use almost like a holy site to see if she can spot uh, any marks of heresy or uh, taint of chaos anywhere whether it's on an individual or in a store or an item and it's something that that looks um, like it may have been with corruption because if there's whoever's killing people obviously has been tainted and uh, they need to be found they could be anywhere and so she's being vigilant looking for that as she walks down with the uh, a chain sword that's almost as big as she is in power armor um just kind of um cradled in an arm uh with the bolt pistol strapped on her other on her opposite hip uh i i think syra um because she's she's not in power armor and i think as as a member of the auto order Prenatus, she's probably more used to to just going out into the wider imperium and, and interacting with civilians than perhaps her her more militant sisters. I think she's she's in her her flat coat is is kind of subtly armored, but it looks like ecclesiastical robes. She's got her her weapons aren't actually on display. Um, they're kind of tucked inside her her robes, and, and she's quite she's a relatively short woman. Um, I I rolled her height, and it came out as four foot ten. Um, and so I think maybe she's she's kind of leading the way but also kind of dodging stairs because she's she's the least intimidating looking of these of these people oh celestina will definitely be keeping an eye on syra making sure that no one bothers her or gets in her way uh being she's the one most danger she's also staring uh, every single person out because uh she knows they're all sinners. I mean, only the wicked flee when when no one pursues. But she's definitely looking out. She's gazing deep into everyone, trying to find out who the real sinners are. I mean, they're all sinners of one, some or other degree. But trying to maybe gauge out if anyone in particular in the crowd may be this murderer we're looking for. But mainly keeping an, an eye on Syrah. So as you uh, are walking down the road, you're keeping your eye, your your head on a pivot, checking uh, everybody that you pass, looking into the uh, windows and doors that you're able to, keeping a vigilant eye, um, as it were. You don't see anything that stands out totally as anything that would warrant your attention at this point. Uh, there are some uh, areas that have some graffiti on them. Uh, you see a few symbols. Uh, nothing that stands out as anything uh, tied to the dark gods or uh, any of the uh, chaos cults that you've been briefed upon that may be operating in uh, the hive itself. Uh, Is there anything that's remotely um, impure or heretical about the graffiti? No. Or that could be presumed to be... No, from uh, what you see mostly from the graffiti is uh, various gang signs. Uh, you would. Oh, know that's that... that's enough. Sifenia <laughs> uh, <laughs> will just walk over, and power up the uh, chain sword, and just scratch through the the cinder block or the cement, whatever that it's painted on, and just score it out because that's defacing the emperors. Uh, yeah, no, it's gone. Yeah, you would uh, see uh, Sifenia gear her chainsword to life with a loud roar as she takes it to the uh, graffiti that she comes across, some on metal, some on concrete. Uh, you see sparks flying and shards of metal ripping apart and uh, bits and pieces of cinder blocks 
uh, on buildings chip away as she tries to uh, scour clean the uh, the uh, works of the emperor, the the buildings that were built in his name. Sarah just kind of pinches her nose and, and watches this happen, and kind of when when Sofenya is done, just says, "Sister, you cannot deface every piece of graffiti in this hive." Any impurity is the smallest chink in the armor that must be removed. Sorry, just kind of looks around at the hive and just this this sprawling kind of mass of of pollution and filth that they're standing in. Just says, "I admire I admire your conviction." Try to clean up the uh, the hive itself would be a, a life's work, and then some. She knows that it's just whatever small things that can be removed. Yeah. So as you uh, continue on down the main thoroughfare, uh, you get to uh, towards the uh, junction that you were uh, directed to go to. And you uh, come across a uh, a T intersection, and as you get to where the other sides are opening up, you see an uh, an Arbite uh, officer further down along the right hand path, and he looks up and he sees you, and uh, he waves you down, assuming that you're there for the uh, the issue that has been brought to their attention. Um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm probably going to lead the way then. Um, Sarah's going, she's, she's, she kind of leads, leads the group over and, uh, and sees what's, what's going on with this Arbite. Is he, do we, do we know that he's the, the guy we're here to see? Uh, it would be assumed to be, um, he is where you were told to go. So I would be a safe bet. So yeah, kind of walk up to him and 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 see see what he has to show us. Sofen is taking in the surroundings. She's not looking at where the bodies are. She's looking up and around to see what else is in the area. Like for uh, what the uh, environment looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, any windows that might be looking down on the area? Any possible escape routes that would have been used, could have been used, that type of thing. No, uh, you would be uh, led into. I want to call it a tunnel of sorts, but it's hard to call it a tunnel when you're in a hive. Yeah. Um, I'm actually having a real hard time describing what this is. Like, I know what it looks like in my head, but using words, using some of the words that I want to use kind of contradict it because you're in a massive structure, but there's streets and roads and... It's, it's kind of like an alleyway. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, best like an way, enclosed alley? Yes. Um, okay. Like in some of, uh, say, some of the older cities in our world that are kind of close together, there may be some... Uh, uh, paving stones instead of uh, concrete. Uh, some of the buildings might be close together. Uh, alleyways between buildings are winding and buildings have popped up uh, here and there over the years because where you're walking now, uh, people have walked for over 2,000 years before you in these very same uh, streets. So nothing is new. Everything is in various forms of um, disarray, decay, and repair. Nothing is ever fixed to a pristine state down in the lower aspects of the hive. The further you get up in the hive itself, the, uh, the better the quality of life gets. The more sun you get, the cleaner water you get, um, the cleaner your surroundings are. Uh, your stuff is repaired um, more often and to a higher quality. Um, you could picture a hive like a pyramid 
and like we have our pyramid schemes nowadays, the next step up is built upon those that come below. So you have your underhive, which is the, the grossest of the gross. You have giant insects growing down there. You have mutants that have gone to escape the retribution of uh, uh, the forces of the emperor. Uh, people who are escaping uh, persecution and retribution go hide in the underhive. It is not, it's not a pretty place. Like, take what you would imagine from a sewer from some fiction works and picture that is where people live. Like, you have pipes of effluent draining into big ponds. You have uh, sump crocs, big ass uh, reptiles living in this filth and gross, um, basically runoff of billions and billions of people. Like, take our world's population and everything that we have on a regular day uh, in our own waste and condense it into one area the size of a city. And that would give you a rough estimation of what an underhive is like. And then from there, things get better the higher you go up. Currently, in our position in this hive, we are about the middle range. We're not, we're not in a well-to-do kind of place, but we're not in the worst of places. Um, gangs are rampant. Um, yeah, gangs are rampant. Uh, there's constant brawls and fights in the bars. Uh, the police presence um, is not great. Uh, you may be one of the few uh, real forces of the government of the Hive that has been down there in quite some time without factoring in the Arbites, because they are they're stretched thin. And sorry, I had a hard time uh, keeping a straight face there. One of our uh, members in chat uh, with uh, what I was just describing, the, uh, the hive structure. Uh, he, uh, Ibram said this plot twist, the game is a satire of Amway. It kind of is. <laughs> it kind of is. Um, in the grim future, this is not something that we should strive for, because it's not good. Um, anyway, sorry, I need to turn my chats off. Um, yeah, so as you go down the, uh, the road to where the, uh, officer is, you would be being led into what would look like an alleyway. Uh, this alleyway starts off with a big, uh, cylindrical entry, like a, a big tunnel, but large enough for, uh, a supply truck or lorry to be able to get get through. So uh, when he sees you coming closer, oh, by the throne, I didn't expect them to send a squad of battle sisters. But come, come, thank you for attending us in such a quick manner. I am honored and humbled that they would send someone down to deal with this, like someone as esteemed as you four. But he, he is very thrown off by the fact that some Sisters of Battle, uh, Adeptus Sororitas, have been sent down to uh, attend to this matter. And then he, uh, he quickly turns around, beckons you to follow him as he leads you down, a, uh, down the alleyway. Uh, once you uh, walk about 5 to 10 meters, the, uh, the tunnel entrance opens up to a larger area again, very similar to what you just came from in the main thoroughfare. Um, they have a uh, cordon and some sheets uh, put up around one of the areas. You are uh, pretty much at like a, a four-way junction at this point, um, with the uh, roads going off in 90 degree angles, um, the one that you just came from and three other directions. Uh, looking down some of the other ways, you see some uh, smaller buildings at this point, some look more or resemble not much more than um, hovels. Um, some scrap board uh, sheds. I'm trying to think of the proper word for it. Um, Shanties? Yeah. Yeah, so even here on this level, walking away from the main area, you can see the uh, decrease in the, the property value. 
you have to be careful where you step. You might step on somebody's home. Pretty much. Or somebody. You see one or two yeah. people uh, sitting against uh, some of the the buildings, just not paying attention. Their heads down, not trying to not trying to draw any attention to uh, into them themselves. So Penny is very glad that the helmet is down and that there is a filtration system, air filtration system. Yeah, for those of you who are not so lucky to have uh, a helmet, um, would you have a rebreather? Um, Sarah has a, a survival kit, but I think in in this level of the hive, she's probably not wearing uh, a rebreather. Yeah. Um, she finds it easier to kind of not impede her senses through the systems of a helmet. Celestina's faith won't let her get sick. <laughs> well said. Yeah, so uh, those of you who have access to the open air, um, the smells are not pretty. Uh, it's dirty. Uh, the smell of um, fumes from some of the vehicles that are traveling around are, are lingering. Uh, if you look up, you would see there are some fans, but they're moving very slowly, so they're not circulating the air uh, as much as they should be in, uh, in this level. It looks like they need more than the Emperor's cleansing light here. And the, uh, so, the, sorry, go ahead. No, no it's okay. Uh, the guard would uh, catch a little bit of uh, what you said and turn around. It's like, well, I, that's why you're with us, sister. Bring in the Emperor's light to these dark and dirty places. Yes, so. Well, this better have been worth our time. We were told there were, there had been murders. Can you show us to the bodies? Yes, yes, we are almost there. Uh, roughly about 20 meters in front of you, um, you see a few more uh, guards standing around the, uh, the area that's been cordoned off. Cordoned off. Um, <clears throat> so as you get to it, there's uh, one Arbite that will pull the blinds aside to let you through. And as you walk through, I'm assuming you're walking through? Yes. Yeah, so as yeah. you walk through, you see three bodies on the ground. And there is blood in like a three meter radius all around these bodies. From what you could see at uh, this point, um, they've been. They've received some pretty heavy damage. So, as a literal sister of battle, one who has been in war and has seen death in a lot of forms from a lot of causes, what would be Sefenya's read on what happened here as far as what type of weapons um, or damage has been done to the bodies? Is this, you know, were they beat? Were they hacked into pieces? Uh, was a chain weapon used? Was a powered weapon used? Yeah, so when you get close enough to take a good look at what's going on, um, the level of carnage that has been visited upon these bodies uh, reminds you of what you've seen in the war zone that uh, you were at not too long ago uh, battling uh, the vicious greenskins. So the wounds on these people are rough. They are hewn. It's what you remember seeing when uh, like an orc choppa would bite into a, a body. Um, Sarah's going to kind of crouch down and, and examine the bodies further. Um, can I, should I roll um, an investigation test? Sure. Yeah, let's get our first roll of the game underway. Yep. So, uh, as we go through this, um, our... I'm just going to pull up Cyrus here because she... Uh, so, rolling is broken down 
sorry, the, the, let's try to figure out how to word this. Uh, the way that we roll on Wrath and Glory is we have a D6 dice pool. Not unlike uh, other games, um, like Warhammer 40k, the tabletop role-playing game. Or, sorry, not the tabletop role-playing game, but the, the tabletop war game. Um, Forbidden Lands, uh, any, or a lot of stuff done by uh, Free Elegant. Uh, very similar to the upcoming uh, game of Soulbound by Q7, the AOS game. Uh, so this kind of system is all over the place. So we're going to take our attributes, and we're going to take our skills, and we're going to add them together. And then that's going to give us our dice pool. So in the case of Investigation, uh, we have... We have my, my uh, Investigation rating of 2. And then my intellect rating of five, of um, three, because um, intellect is is the the attributes linked to investigation, and so my my dice pool is five. Right. So then we're going to have uh, Joel roll five d six. Now, this is what I need a clarification on going into this was the wrath die. Does that come into play when you're doing standard rolls like this? Any test has a wrath die. Uh, it's I think it's any test can have one, um, but I think it's the the GM can um, just say that we don't need to worry about it. Kind of like um, Charlotte. Have you ever played Ali the Alien RPG by Freya Logan? Not yet. No. Have you seen it played? Ah, uh, no. Okay, they use it uses the same system, and you have a sanity die that gets rolled regardless every time. Um, and but if you're not, if it's a test that's not going to involve sanity, where that's not going to be a question, like a, you know moving gear or something, then you can you ro it rolls, but you ignore it. Right. Which I think is kind of similar in this case. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to try and pull up the actual wording for the Wrath Eye itself. Because um, the Wrath Eye can be used... Uh, Page 163. Cool, thanks. Uh, or 162 and 163, that kind of two-page spread. Yeah. Um, yeah, so at the start of every game, uh, every character starts off with two Wrath. And we'll get into what we can do with that a little bit afterwards. Um there's a few different uh, meta currencies and subsystems in Wrath and Glory, which we'll touch upon uh, when we get to them. Um, the the Wrath die works the same as every other die in your pool when determining icons and exalted icons, but also activates special effects when it lands on a one or a six. These effects always trigger regardless of if you succeed or fail the skill test. So very similar to uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, if you're familiar to that. If you roll doubles, um, that will be either a fumble or a crit, depending on whether you fail your roll or succeed your, your roll, regardless of whether you actually pass the test or not. Um, so let's get Joel to roll his uh, dice pool. Now with the Wrath dice, you are going to roll your standard um, sorry uh, being told I'm a little bit too quiet I just adjusted my mic volume a little bit we'll see if that helps uh, if you sorry when you go to roll your dice pool uh, convert one of those dice typically into a different color uh, so normally they'll use the uh, evidence of red uh, in this case, I didn't have a chance to get that set up in our fantasy grounds. Uh, so we're just going to consider the final dice in the pool, the final die that's rolled up as a result, as the wrath die. Uh, I checked it before. It doesn't uh, filter through uh, numerically. It will be random. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. So I will have you roll your 5d6. Uh, what's the DM? Uh, we're going to look at, uh, in this case... Uh, a one. So okay. this is pretty straightforward. Five. Okay. All right. So now our wrath dice is a three. So we're good on that uh, side of things. Now to succeed in a roll in wrath and glory, um, we have to factor in 
um, fours, fives, and sixes. So on a roll of four plus, you get an icon. If you roll a four or a five, you will get a standard icon, which would count as one success. If you roll a six, that is considered an exalted icon. So that counts as two icons. So in uh, our roll here, uh, we have two successes by the looks. Yep. So yeah, so uh, um, Sister Syrah uh, successfully is able to glean some information from this. And you need to you need to meet the so the DN is the target, and you need to meet it to succeed. Yeah. So if I'd only got one, I would still have succeeded. Yeah. Now, when you have extra successes, you can do something called shift, but we'll get to that when it's a little bit more pertinent. And that's only on exalted. Okay. Good. So I couldn't shift on this roll. Right. That's fair. Thanks. All right. So, um, yeah, you're you're looking down on the bodies, and uh, none of their stuff has been taken. Like nothing has been stolen. They have just been brutalized very bad. Um, one of them's missing an arm, which uh, if you look a few feet away, you'll find it. Um, there's big wounds in their chest from where the the cleaver-like axes bit into their bodies. Um, one thing that does stand out as odd to you, though, is their heads. Their mouths itself have been turned into bloody messes and as you look closer you notice that the majority of their teeth have been ripped out and in the case of one body their entire jaw is missing is well. that sorry is is that a result of being hit there with an axe or is this kind of so they they were dead and then they were mutilated yeah you'd uh, determine that they were mutilated after being dead um what's your medicaid at? uh my medicaid is uh, is only three because I don't have any rating in it, so it's just my intellect. Yeah, I mean, you'd be able to tell that uh, a lot of this happened after the fact. Um, the the wounds in the body came first, and the uh, the damage to their mouths came second. Um, not all teeth were taken. There have been some that were left behind. Um, but more or less, everything else was stripped out of their mouth. And a jaw. Is Sorry, I should, I should clarify. My Medicare rate, my my, med, my Medicare rating is zero. My dice pool for it is three. Yeah. Would that ring a bell with anything that known cults, known anything as far as the focusing on the teeth, like that? No, nothing yet at this point has been uh, brought into the attention of the authorities regarding this. But uh, on her own knowledge, has has this ever been a thing anywhere she's been that she or studied up on as far as uh, cults or especially given the work like violence of the uh, of the uh, wounds from what you would know this would not be typical behavior okay I mean orcs have been known to take trophies in the past like right the heads of their foes and weapons and there have even been cases where you uh, have seen an orc or two parading around with uh, a belt of arms like an old Roman kirtle yeah but it takes finesse to pull teeth and also if there were orcs loose in in the middle of the hive we would have seen we it would have been noticed I, um, I, yes. I'm saying that there's something that maybe someone has picked up from them. Because this is power, this is, this is a lot of force. This is a big bladed weapon, this was an, of an axe or some sort. And then with finesse, they pulled teeth. Even just pulling off a jaw takes strength but it also takes a dexterity it's an odd combination D 
Does, what else is... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, would Rolling Scholar help here, maybe? Um... Yeah, you could. I mean, it's not unheard of to have orcs in a hive. Mm -hmm. um, orcs are pretty much everywhere, and unless you burn them all out on a world, they will keep on coming back. Uh, orcs in this setting are fungus. So the fungus among us. <laughs> Looking um, up and around, what else can we see? from inside the uh, cordoned off area or would you uh, start to roam the area to figure out what's going on a little bit more on the outside? Yeah, within the, uh, I'm going to expand the radius by say, mm, let's call it five meters. Yeah, so you'll step out of the, uh, out of the tent and, uh, well, sorry, not a tent, but uh, out of the uh, cordoned off area, uh, the, the guard on the outside will open the uh, flap for you again as he hears you coming and you start to look around start to walk in a, a bit of a circle around the uh, the area and you you come across uh, some blood that uh, looks like it dripped from about three four feet off the ground and it's going Footprints. into a, uh, you see some scuffs on the ground some big scuffs uh, nothing um, very detailed. It's not like you're finding a uh, footprint in the mud or something. Um, just uh, some blood droplets that are going off into one direction. And that's pretty much about all that you found up to this point. That would be uh, anything out of the ordinary. I'm going to go back and ask if anyone, who, any of my sisters would like to join me in tra tracing this uh, blood dripping. I will join you. I was already headed outside of the cordon off area anyway. Um, is there, I mean, is there anything else here particularly? Uh, nothing aside from the bodies. Um. Uh, would my, my investigation have revealed or the Arbite know who they were? Uh, yeah, if you approach them about it and ask if uh, any ID, ID was found on them, they give you a lot of negatives. They they don't, on their level, keep track of who's kicking around. Uh, you could tell from their clothing that they have that they're just regular uh, scum that are kicking around the area. Um, so are the Arbites just like a normal human with nothing strange about them? Yeah, typically they're just like your average police officer in, I think it's carapace armor is typical for them. Uh, it could vary from uh, region to region. And I assume we have higher authority than them? Oh yeah. Okay. In, in that case, I am going to pick him up by the scuffle of his neck and bash him against the wall and uh, basically tell him, uh, it's clear that this wasn't the work of sinner lowlifes. Uh, tell us what you know, and don't waste the Emperor's time. Uh, he lets out a big rush of air as uh, you slammed him into the wall, you said? Yes. Yeah, and uh, it takes him a second to be able to catch his breath. Um, I, I'm sorry, sister, like, I don't know what else to tell you. This is all that we know. We have been hearing some reports of some orcs in the area, but... That's... I, I can't tell you anything else. Where do these reports come from? Any general direction? No, we just hear random stuff as we do our patrols. People muttering and whispering. Nobody... You understand that nobody really comes and reports directly to us, right? Celestina sighs and just lets him fall onto the ground. And he falls in a bit of a heap. Kind of... Very shooken his uh, buddies step away from him a little bit, give him some space. And, and how, how do you pronounce your sister's name again? Sorry. 
Celestina. Celestina and uh, oh. who's Al- me? Yeah. Oh, Alistas. Alista. Okay. I'm writing it down ph- phonetically, so I'll remember. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I. Let's see if we can. How fresh does this blood look that we're looking at the drops? Uh, it'd be a few hours old. Um, it's dry in some places. The drops have started to uh, congeal. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the life cycle of blood itself as to what it looks like after well, six or seven hours of uh, being somewhere. Uh, it oh, it's ta- dried and cracked. Yeah. Yeah, you used to... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it would look like maybe about six, seven hours. Uh, it took a little while to get down to where you were after being uh, summoned. Um, well, let's go follow the trail. Maybe we can uh, get a few more ideas of what's going on here. You say that to everybody so that uh, they can make their choice to follow, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, well, um, Alestis was the first one out, so um, and I think Sofania would have just stopped with her and said, you know, let's, let's. Well, yeah, I'll just there, follow, he... yeah, I'll just follow in behind Sofania and uh, just kind of keep an eye on things. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go along in the, kind of, in, in the group. All right, so uh, you follow the uh, the droplets of blood uh, down one of the streets. It's the same road that uh, you would have taken. Sorry, it is in the same direction that you came into the area from, uh, right. which uh, will lead out to another tunnel exit from uh, this uh, section. The droplets of blood start to uh, peter off after uh, about 10, 15 meters. Um, but the way that they've fallen would give you a lot of evidence that this is the direction that they ended up going. And as you enter the uh, the tunnel itself, um, Passive awareness. Is, that's not just for uh, detecting attack, is it? Uh, no, it's for opposing stealth, I think, as well. Right. Uh, so really wouldn't be too helpful in this instance. Either way, um, as you're walking down through the tunnel, you see uh, the drops pick up a little bit more, but this time they are going at... Uh, not a perpendicular angle to the way that they dropped before, but um, off a little bit more. So, like, if you're walking straight ahead, the drops be like this. So, All right. Continue following the drops, and uh, yeah, Sofendi's not bothering to try and be stealthy because there's nothing stealthy about a sister in battle armor, um, especially one with the visor down, carrying a chain sword. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, when she idly revs every now and then. (laughs) (laughs) Nah. Presumably the engine for it is on. Oh, yeah. It's it's idling quietly, but... Yeah, so when you come across this uh, new batch of drops, this time they look more like splatters than drops. And as you follow the line of the, the drops or the, the splatter in this case, you see um, red going up the wall of the tunnel itself. And it's a little bit darker in this area. The light isn't as bright. Um, but you can make out on the wall in a darker red from uh, the lack of light um, a circle, which looks to be drawn in blood. 
So you have the circle, and then in blood you see a face, like a mouth drawn in the lower portion of it with two slits for eyes up at the top and might be a little smudge for a nose or something. Um, and then on the perimeter of the circle, also in blood, you see a lot of spikes that are drawn around the circle. So it's it would almost look like um, an old drawing of the sun with rays coming off of it. And it has the mouth, the nose, and the eyes that are drawn onto it as well. Um, and then bisecting that circle is a big, um, or a larger spray of blood going up the wall from which you would see they took the blood to draw the circle. So the droplets or the, uh, the, um, the splatter on the ground if you were to look at it closely, would be the act of bringing an axe up to flick blood off of the axe. And this is still dry blood? Yes. Now that is heresy. Any sign of bodies, body parts, anything like that? Not in this area. I'm going to uh, click on the lights of my power suit and kind of take a closer look at this drawing on the wall. Does this iconography, is it reminiscent of everything, anything we've seen before? Uh, yeah, let me pull up something quickly to double check. Um, you would know through your tr uh, education through the uh, years that it is something akin to what an orc would uh, use to... Um, represent their god or gods uh, which in this case is uh, Gork and Mork I think, right? Yeah. You don't know a lot about their belief system but uh, you've seen similar icons in the past, not quite like this um, but in the same vein as what you're seeing now. Rather wishing I had a flamer at the moment as she revs up her chainsword and if and if anybody's going to object, do it now because she's about to deface this and remove it completely. I, I step away giving her full access. Likewise. <laughs> And keep an eye on our perimeter. And she just starts using the chainsaw to score into the brick of the tunnel side until it's been scoured clean. Yeah, it would and take then, a few minutes to get it to that point. Yep. Yeah. And then I think with as much dexterity as she can she's going to put uh the symbol of the uh emperor on the wall carved into it with her chainsword the uh the aquila yes and for those who are not familiar with nice. the uh, imperial aquila off to the left of my name is what it would look like and because i have to do this not there so, I am a true servant of the Emperor. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you would take uh, whatever time you need to carve that into the wall. Yep, and it's, it's kind of a rough sketch, because it's being done with a chainsaw, but <laughs> it's there. As as Sophenia does that, um, Syra uh, recites a, a litany of, of purification to cleanse the, the spiritual malaise that this heretical symbol has caused which awesome. fulfills my objective and earns me an extra point of wrath bonus uh, yeah what were the other objectives we had for Ina I had recall a wise structure your drill abbess laid down and its application to the current situation and then for uh, 
Not my my objective though. seems pretty, uh... Invoke an Imperial Saint to bless your achievements. I... That'll be pretty easy. Um... Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just whenever you achieve something. <laughs> yeah. Um, invoke an Imperial Saint to bless your achievements. Yeah, if, if Zephania had access to a flamer, she would have, you know, purged that, but uh, all she's got is a chainsword, so. Uh, any more blood to follow or footprints? Any footprints that are associated with the blood that we could follow from this point? This um, part of this section isn't as well traveled and the air is not flowing as fast here as in some other places. So dust has settled over time. Um, so you're able to make out uh, boot prints in the dirt uh, on the ground. Uh, continuing on in the direction that you've been traveling so far. No more blood at this point. Uh, it's safe to assume that uh, whatever they had that was uh, freely available is well, now on concrete chunks on the ground, but was once on the wall. Right. Well, time to follow the boot prints. Yeah, so um, anybody else want to do anything else before you carry on? <clears throat> Okay, so, as you carry on, uh, the alleyway that you're on right now travels down for about another 40, 50 feet, or a meter, sorry. Um, and the alleyway itself starts to turn off to the right. Um, you're not in a wide open area at this point. It's more of a, a wider tunnel, like an extension of the uh, exit of the last section. Uh, kind of like a a tube to connect one area to the next. So as you're walking along, uh, the road is getting just a little bit uh, more dirtier in some places. Uh, the lights flicker as you're walking past. Uh, you don't hear too many uh, noises. Uh, that stand out um, but as you uh, round the corner about 20 meters down you see the uh, exit of the tube to another section and as you walk out of that section um, you see another three-way uh, T intersection up ahead and as you get closer to it, uh, on the right-hand side, uh, there is a curb, and on that curb you see, uh, like a fence, uh, like a, almost like a chain-link fence with scrap metal and wood pieces put up, um, roughly on it, so you can't really see in it or out it. Uh, there are some, um, warning signs up on the fence itself, uh, kind of like, keep away, stay out, um, trespassers will be shot, survivors will be shot again, that sort of thing. Um, Are these all spelled correctly? No. No, that is a lot to ask for. Um, yeah, th these are I very... doubt Fenya could spell it correctly. <laughs> these are all very roughly drawn, roughly worded um, warning posters. Uh, just a little bit further down the fence, you see, uh, like, what, what would be a gate uh, with two doors that could open up. Um, you don't see anything securing the gates to each other, uh, but aside from that, there's nothing overly... Um, Nothing makes this gate stand out from much else that you've seen at this point. Uh, and then the uh, areas that keep on going on the road that you're on now, and the one that would be perpendicular to the gate, uh, those go down into farther tunnels. Um, the boots themselves, uh, being as this area has been trod a little bit more, um, you can still see some scuffs on the ground itself, uh, where rocks have been moved and uh, scraped, which uh, keep on going down. 
the uh, um, the road itself. Sorry, it's roughly at this point my brain starts shutting down for descriptors. Right, so uh, let's take a second to see if anybody from our players or chat has any questions before we move on to uh, this next part. While I uh, use that time to get my documents pulled up. Can I add a flamethrower to my chainsword? Um, I am not sure how that would be done. <laughs> It never hurts to ask. I mean, I was going to ask for a pony, but I think I'd rather have a flamer right now. You, do you have a bolt pistol? Yes. I think um, you could, I mean, you probably can't do it now, but I think you can probably, one of the upgrades you can have is a combi weapon. Yeah. Um, so you'd have like a bolt pistol and flamer in one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh... Mama wants. Well, yeah, yeah we you could... could... We... You could combine a pistol with a hand flamer, I think, if they've got the right traits. Yeah, I think a combi weapons yeah. need some tweaking as mm. they stand right now, don't they? I know there's some confusion on that. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely talk about that in between our, uh, our sessions. And then retcon it. Um, yeah. Though scouring things with a chainsword, I think we should keep it because that's kind of... <laughs> It, it, it's very Stefania. Yeah. yeah. She is not subtle in any way, shape, or form. All right. Uh, yeah, so as you get closer to the gate, um, you uh, start to hear noise coming from what uh, sounds like behind the gate, but at some distance. Sire is going to draw her pistols. Because I think she's the only one who doesn't have the we her weapons out at the moment. What kind of noises are we hearing? Uh, arguments. People are arguing somewhere off in, uh, in the distance behind this gate. They are voices in raised in anger. It's very hard to make out at this distance what exactly is being said. Uh, through your enhanced um, audio from your helmet, uh, you hear some male voices that are uh, deep and booming and some female voices and uh, they both I'm, I'm going to ask a question that's that's from an in-universe perspective here people or aliens? people you hear imperial voices is this gate open? nope, not yet uh, is it like to be? <laughs> Does it have like a lock mechanism where it's uh, that's what's holding it holding it closed? Like, not that you could see from the outside, but you do see, like if you were to get down um, to look further down or step back a little bit, you would see that there's wheels on the bottom, so you would know that it can be opened and closed easily, ah. roughly easily. So no need to shoot at it then. Oh, well, I mean. If you feel like you need to shoot something, there's always a need. Um, but no, no. Um, All right, then Celestina just goes kind of like, and then just opens the gate yes, without so at, shooting at it. As you get up to it, you uh, go to grab the gate and you pull on it and you find that it's 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 barred from the other side. Not so much barred, but when you go to move it, there is um, resistance. So. Uh, I am going to get you to do a strength test. All right. So would that be uh, just base strength or athletics? Uh, I think there'll be just base strength in this case. All right. So, so three dice plus my uh, rack die. Right? Uh, or... Also, your strength is um, modified by your power armor. Yes. Oh. Yeah, because Dutch. you have Sororitas power armor, which gives you power armor two, you add Ooh. two dice to any strength rolls. So that um, would be five dice plus the yeah. one wrap dice then. So yeah, No, five, five dice. Go ahead. Karen. No, go ahead. Five dice and one of them is the wrap die. Ah, the last one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So now, um, Three, yeah, four, I'll get you to roll five. Your, your five dice and we'll be shooting for a difficulty of five in this case. And the reason why I didn't say it a little bit earlier, because I want to highlight uh, one mechanic. So we have... 
One, two, yeah. three, four successes. So not quite enough. So you go to grab it, and you pull on it, and it doesn't budge <laughs> for you. But you think that with help, it might work. I'll step forward to help. Yeah, so you take your heavy bolter, you move it off to the side on its sling, just to uh, balance it on your back, and you grab a hold as well. Now, when you go to do a help, uh, I can't remember the exact term that they use in this one, but like an assistance roll. Um, a lot of other systems will have the person who is doing the main action take another die for uh, a better chance at, su at success. Uh, for Wrath and Glory, you add your dice to it. So Celestina grabs it and pulls. Uh, her success level is, uh, well, her successes are four successes. And then uh, Alicetus would grab a hold as well and pull with her full force. So it is five dice plus five dice? Yeah, I believe I'll also have five dice. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... It is a complete combination of your strength, not just a little bit of an assistance. So that's a little bit different from what I've seen from other systems uh, to date. So if I can get you to roll yours... And you have that one success, which brings you to the five successes that are needed. Um, so yeah, you both grab hold, um, Celestina tries first, it doesn't move, and then uh, Alicetus steps up, grabs it as well, and they uh, look at each other, and then at the same time, they both pull their opposite directions, and you see the, uh, the gate start to give way as it slowly moves. And then off in the distance, through the gaping uh, gates now, you see two groups of people about 100 meters down the road. Uh, Sifenia at this point will lift up the visor of her helmet, which she normally keeps down. And the reason why she does is because there is a very brutal, nasty scar across her face where it looks like maybe she caught a blow from an orc chapa once. And unlike the people in the alley, she actually survived the blow. Um, but it is, it is nasty. And it's the reason why she keeps the visor down. But... Uh, there are times when that appearance has its uses. And so she puts up the visor and puts the chainsword at the ready that is still idling and starts to walk forward. Uh, Sorry is going to follow. Sorry is going to follow behind her um, with with her pistol still out. Celestina close behind uh, Syra with the bolt gun loaded. I will bring up the rear with my bolt gun readied. Great. So yeah, as you walk through the door uh, or the gate, uh, you look on to both sides and you see that there's uh, some system that they have rigged up in place to uh, make it harder to uh, get the gate forced open. So that would explain the, the struggle that uh, you had as you're getting in. So you uh, purposefully stride down the alleyway towards this, uh, these two groups of people. And uh, on the right-hand side, you see about five or six big brutes, big hulking men, uh, from what you can see at this, or what you're assuming to be men. Uh, their uh, clothing is very muted. Uh, you see armor plates uh, painted in a dark uh, gray with chips of paint here or there, rust showing through. Um, but they, they are human to your eyes. And then on the left, you see a, uh, a bit of a larger group, and... Uh, these are women. And these women are flashy. They're colorful. They have uh, extravagant uh, hairstyles done up in mohawks and long braids going down their neck. And they have their hair dyed in uh, bright blues and greens and whites. Whereas the, uh, the other uh, group that they're opposite to, uh, their hairstyles are uh, shorn very close to their skulls. And they're, they're a little bit more laid back. So what you would know from uh, seeing these two groups is that you have rival gangs, rival houses. You have House Goliath on the right, and you have House Escher on the left. Which, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Warhammer 40k, are two prominent houses in the Necromunda universe. 
So I think at that point we're going to stop it there for today's uh, session. Uh, so f next week we'll uh, start with uh, the sisters approaching these two groups. Um, I know we didn't get as much rolling done or further uh, progressed as what I'd like to, but uh, that's okay. We still have a few hours next time to get this all uh, going a little bit more. Uh, we were able to cover the basic mechanics of rolling dice um, and how or where Wrath pops in. Um, it's also um, the first time that everyone here has gotten together to, to play together, so as a group we're all still feeling each other out. Uh, that will hopefully be a little bit different for our second session as what I'm used to seeing in uh, any kind of groups. Um, any questions from anybody up to this point as to what we've done so far? Anything that needs clarification, whether from the players or the chat? No, I, you know, for the most part, this system is pretty straightforward. Yeah, I know. Uh, no questions so far. <laughs> it will get yeah, a little but... bit uh, confusing as we get into uh, shifting our exalted icons, um, getting into determination and shock. Um, hopefully we will be able to touch on some of that next week. I'm not hoping someone gets injured a lot, but... You know, for the sake of a learn to play, somebody get hurt. Um, <laughs> if not, you're going to stub your toe really bad. Uh, yeah, uh, any comments from uh, the four of you? I like this much better than the D10 system. Yeah. Um, I noticed that, especially with character creation. I mean, character creation seemed to be fairly similar to the D10 system. I mean, when I first saw the sheet, that's what I was thinking of. But um, I like I like the dice pool idea much better. Um, the, it just feels like it. You've got to. You're being set up to succeed to succeed rather than fail. Yes. And I think where the, the grittiness comes in here is that if if you look at how, how combat works and how certain things work there, the enemy is also being set up to succeed. So it's kind of, you, you hit hard, but you also take big hits, um, which can can really help. Yep. Um, I never played the, the Fancy Flight 40k ones, but they always, from reading them, they always seemed a bit kind of very, very into the crunch, very kind of calculating and tabulating a lot of bonuses, whereas here it's it's relatively simple. It's kind of, here's how many extra dice you get, here's the DN, then we roll. As a as a relative newcomer to, to 40k, I mean, my experience was with an Inquisitor stream and the one um, uh, one shot in uh, Warhammer Fantasy. And in the Inquisitor stream, uh, we were actually using a different system altogether. Um, mutants and masterminds and to, to build our characters and so I I find there's a lot if you're kind of just coming into 40k there's a lot there there's a lot of lore there's a lot of different you've got the the war game war gaming with the miniatures and the tiles and then you've got the Warhammer Fantasy and you've got all these different editions and games of 40k and this seems like the most approachable system setup that I've seen yet. If I was going to introduce somebody to 40K, I'd be doing it through this. Yeah, it as a setting itself, um, like there's, what are we at now, like 40 years of setting for 40K, some of which has been redone over the years, some has been tweaked. Um, it's always evolving. It is a very, it's a very hard system, hard setting to get people on boarded with very quickly. Uh, so I figured that it would be best to do it in a case where um, it's a little bit more on the smaller scale. We're not looking at like global and system wide politics. We're focusing on some houses, some gangs in a hive setting. So it's a little bit more familiar as to how we would see our own world from that perspective and not having to worry about um, 
what's going on like with the governor of uh of the hive itself now if we were to get into uh, a longer campaign uh there's a chance that we would probably run something like uh, dark tides which has that aspect it's more on a larger scale you're dealing with uh, rogue traders and government officials um a, a bit broader scope to the the game itself whereas for a uh a three four hour learn to play trying to get it narrowed down to this i think is uh it's what i was shooting for but what even I, go ahead I, I was gonna say one of the things i quite like about wrath and glory is the um the gilead system chapter that cubicle seven have gone in and redone and, and expanded from the original version and it's it's obviously it's an introduction to a particular system that wrath and glory assumes that you're you're you have your campaign set in, but also there's each kind of planet in it has a, a couple of different adventure seeds already generated. So um, for, for kind of the, the hive planet uh, in that system, there's a couple of, of ones that of adventure seeds that can really could really easily go into a one shot or a larger campaign. Yeah, I honestly haven't dove into that uh, that portion of the book just yet, just because I didn't need it for this, because I was do doing that Necromunda aspect. But uh, um, we have one person in chat right now that actually wrote the uh, Gilead system for the book. So good work! I really like it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, going back on what you said earlier about the adventure, uh, uh, I thought it was, yeah, like you said, it was pretty uh, simple in uh, what it englobed. Because when I got into this, I was like super nervous because I didn't know enough about the lore or everything and all that stuff. I was expecting a whole amount of techno babble or jargon about the world. of in, in And it was like, oh, no, I, I, I can do this. This is, you know, Warhammer fantasy in space. I'm just, you know, an asshole with authority. That, yeah, that's, that's really easy to do. Uh, yeah, that summarizes up uh, 40k in a nutshell. Um, yeah, uh, in my mind, if you think about like um, some cyberpunk settings, you would start to get a decent feel for how um, some of what we come across in what we're doing here in our game would feel like. Uh, it's like Total Recall, like the old Arnold Schwarzenegger Total Recall might have uh, a bit of a better feel on how Mars was for them as to what we're going through here. Um, and obviously, you know, Necromunda is, was originally created in like the 90s. A lot of that is is directly kind of the, the guys in the Games Workshop studio just putting all of their favorite dystopian stuff into one into as small a package as possible and that's kind of that's net from under yeah all right so yeah if uh, there's no more questions from the chat um let's get this wrapped up for the day so like we did before let's go in clockwise order starting with uh cleric of cord uh we've already heard people's opinions as to how we've gone through so far uh let us know where we can find you on the interwebs and if there's anything cool that you're doing over the next little while that we can check out um yeah so i'm cat i'm at clerk of cord uh on twitter and when i'm in the twitch streams i play games on the internet with my friends and i make new friends that way and it's always a pleasure to come play with charlotte it's been way too long and to meet all of you and to play with you this is great i love it um like i said the one experience i had i was the lone sister on an inquisitor team and it's nice to have your sisters with you always nice to have your sisters with you so um yeah this is great uh where can you find me i'm trying to think what i've got coming up this coming week um i do know on friday at uh, next friday uh at noon, noon eastern 3 p.m eastern calendar <laughs> because i forget stuff a lot what have i got yes that on the Oh, Wednesday, the 13th at 7 p.m. 
Eastern Time on Other Doctor Channel, we're playing Masks. We're starting our second season. Um, it's a lot of fun, teenage superheroes, and, and something a little lighter. And then on um, Friday is uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern on um, Encounter Roleplay is a spy game one shot, which is taking 5D mechanics and moving it to modern day Mission Impossible type oh. spy stuff. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, they've up. They've done a really good job. They just finished a Kickstarter last year that was really successful, um, and you get to play the face and the medic, and they have all kinds of different archetypes. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. So come check that out if you're interested in playing something, um, you know, very very Mission Impossible kind of feel to it, or Mr. and Mrs. Smith even. Um, but yeah, that's so that's me. That's what I'm doing. Awesome. Yeah, and it's been great to play with you again. It's it's been too long. It has. It really has. All right, and then now, Ana, same questions for you. Where can we find you? And are you doing anything cool aside from you know cooking good food and posting it all over the place? Right. <laughs> that, that's my jam. <laughs> Stuck at home. What else am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> I am uh, at DM underscore Sewell on Twitter, and uh, my name is Aina, and uh, this is the only thing I got going on right now. <laughs> uh, I'm really enjoying the game, and uh, it's been almost a year since we got to, to play in a stream together, so yep. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, now it's, and seeing uh, how it turns out. Yeah, I guess it is almost a year now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And that was uh, Conan on uh, Encounter Roleplay. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was. I need to play that again. It's been a while. Uh, and then on to Rodrigo. Well, uh, you can find me at that confusing uh, Twitter tag that's called a Rodrigo and then a series of numbers, which obviously I need to change if I'm expecting anyone to follow me. Uh, <laughs> you can find me mostly at the Ratcatchers Guild or at the Modern Blood Discord complaining about games and ranting about stuff. This was uh, actually this was actually my first uh, Twitch stream role playing stuff. So I'm lots of fun. Glad to be here. So thank you for that. Oh, I'm sorry, Anna. I got your uh, tag wrong. I'll fix that for next time. Uh, th yeah. Thank you, Rodrigo. Um, yeah. And then on to Joel. Uh, yeah, I'm at Storywonka on Twitter, and likewise, this is pretty much the the only thing I've got going on at the moment. Um, if you're in the Wrath and Glory or Soulbound uh, Discord, you can probably find me. Uh, you know, I can probably I'll, I hang out in there. Um, and yeah, the, likewise, it is the first time I've been on an RPG stream. So hopefully in the future I can do some more. Well, let me tell you, next Saturday at 12 o'clock PST, you will be, I hope. All right, and then that leaves me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and in other places at Foxfire22. That is F-O-X-F-Y-R-E-2-2. Uh, I post all kinds of uh, tabletop role-playing things, primarily centered around the newer Warhammer RPGs by Cubicle 7, like uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, uh, Wrath and Glory, obviously, and uh, the upcoming Soulbound. Um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, you can find me in a lot of places that uh, Rodrigo is as well. Uh, the uh, Rat Catchers Guild Discord. Uh, if you need the link for that, uh, let me know. I'll send you an invite. Um, Mud and Blood Podcast, where I've done a bunch of uh, actual plays with them. I'm just waiting for their uh, carrion company, uh, their Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay actual play to finish up for our uh, cult game to uh, get put back on. We got our first three episodes released as a bit of a teaser. Uh, I'm waiting for the rest to go through because that was that was a fun game. Um, and yeah, every Saturday here at 12 o'clock PST I'm going to have something going. Um, the whole premise of this is to be able to run tabletop role-playing games for new players and in most situations from here on in as a new GM. Uh, every three weeks, we're going to have a new game, uh, and each game will run for two sessions at about two hours each. 
Uh, I feel that that gives us uh, enough time to get started into it. It doesn't cross into the three hour period, so if people are listening to this later on in the week on YouTube or uh, Twitch reruns, uh, it doesn't take as much time to get through as a normal AP. So I'm hoping that the uh, way that it is served is a little bit uh, more consumable. Uh, and then uh, that we uh, get stuff explained in a, in a way that people can uh, learn as we're playing through this. Get an idea of how the system works. If you have, if you're a GM and you have players that you want to run this for and they're kind of hesitant, throw this on one day. Tell them to watch this. It's quick, it's easy, um, they can get a, a grasp of how the system works. If you're a player and you want to play games that we have on here, uh, show your GM the uh, our, uh, our episodes to give them an idea of what they're getting into as a GM. Or if you're a first time uh, a GM uh, or a player that's looking at getting into a GM uh, role, I'm hoping that we can help guide that as to this is how we're playing the game for the first time because in games coming up, this will be the first time playing. Like this is my first time GMing Wrath and Glory, uh, Warhammer Fantasy, our s series finished off last week. We had two games of that. That I've run a few times. Uh, but our next game coming up, starting on the 16th, is going to be Soulbound. Uh, I am really looking forward to that one. I'm hoping that I can get the book this week, uh, start doing um, characters up. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, um, retweet our tweets when we go live. Uh, any highlights that we have on here. Um, follow. Uh, hopefully you can be able to subscribe on Twitch soon. Uh, if you want to donate to help offset the tech costs uh, in our chat and in the show notes later, there'll be uh, places that you can do that. Um, yeah, and aside from that, I hope to see everybody back here next week uh, at uh, 12 p.m. on Saturday for the stunning conclusion of Wrath and Glory Verona by Valkyrie Gaming. Uh, so, thank you all. Uh, look forward to next time. And so long. <laughs>